Okay. Well, first of all, I want to thank Evan for doing TEDx Richmond. I have no idea how somebody can be in medical school and pull off a TEDx event from a distance, but Evan did that. So this is great for our community. So Evan, thank you again. You're the man. I, I don't know how you did it. So could we give Evan a round of applause? Well, my entire career has been in higher education in Kentucky, Ohio, Louisiana, and back home again in Indiana. And there are two reasons, two main reasons why I love working in higher ed. It starts with students. It's all about the students. I believe strongly in the transformative impact that higher education can have on the lives of students. The downside of that, of course, is that every year the students seem younger, but the reality is that I'm just getting older, but oh well. But the second thing is, I think it's cool living in places that have universities. You know, there's something different. There's a, a certain vibrancy about uh, places that have universities. This is Natchitoches, Louisiana, a quaint little college town in the south nestled along the Cane River. Quaint except for the snakes in that river, but that's, that's another story that my, my wife could share. Now, if I told you that Richmond, Indiana is a college town, what do you think? What would you say? Yes? Maybe? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. So uh, as we think about that, we all have an image of what a college town is. The magazine Livability ranks the top 10 college towns in America. In 2012, the number one college town was College Station, Texas, home of Texas A&M and Johnny Football. Livability outlines the characteristics that define a true college town. It creates an environment that is enjoyable to all residents, whether enrolled in classes or not. The college is not only a major employer, but it's also the reason for more plentiful shops, restaurants, and entertainment options, mostly geared towards younger people and to academics. Like many of you, when I think of a college town, I usually think of a place where the identity of the city is shaped largely by the presence of its university. So Bloomington, right? That's, that comes to mind immediately. You've got the Sample Gates, Knicks on Kirkwood, IU basketball. Bloomington is the quintessential college town. And by the way, it ranks number seven on the list. College towns like Bloomington have a concentrated mix of bookstores and coffee shops and bars, restaurants with outdoor seating, theaters, galleries, and those quirky retail shops as well, along with plenty of affordable housing for students, for recent graduates, and also for professors. So again, is Richmond a college town? I'll ask you again. It's a town with colleges in it. That's an interesting, an interesting perspective. I say no. When we, we define a college town that way, I say no. We're not a college town. We're different. And that's OK. I would call us a new kind of college town. I would call us Richmond, Indiana, a knowledge town. We're accustomed to thinking of a college town as a town defined by one major university. There's no terminology for a place like Richmond that has multiple diverse institutions. So look at what we have. A private liberal arts college in Earlham, a regional public institution in Indiana University East, a community college in Ivy Tech, as well as the presence of Purdue through its College of Technology, and we should not overlook Bethany Theological Seminary and Earlham School of Religion. As one of the finalists for the IU East Chancellor position said in a public meeting a few weeks ago, other communities would kill to have what we have at Richmond in terms of post-secondary education. Yes, find, find another community our size in Indiana that has anything like the knowledge campus that we have on our north side with IU East, Purdue, Ivy Tech, and Reed Hospital. The idea of looking at Richmond Wayne County as a college town has gained some momentum recently. And there are some initiatives to make Richmond more college friendly. You may have seen these decals, for example, in the depot district at businesses that offer discounts to college students. When we talk about Richmond Wayne County as a college town, 
we first, we tend to focus on the numbers, that we have 10,000, almost 10,000 college students between IU East, Ivy Tech, and Earlham. And you know that combined enrollment is only going to get bigger. And that is significant, especially for a town of 36,000. But the numbers don't tell the whole story. Another reason, and I think a critical one, why Richmond is a college town and why the college town label, um, why we're actually a knowledge town, that college town label doesn't exactly fit for us, it doesn't work for us, is that the definition, the very definition of college is changing and has changed dramatically. And this is where the diversity of our institutions comes in. So of, the, of our group here, how many uh, right after high school left for college had that traditional four-year residential experience somewhere as a full-time student? Okay, just about everyone in the room, just about. Of the college students in America today, only 14% are having that experience, just 14%. The future of higher education, the retooling, the redesigning to meet the needs of all students, that's already here. It's here, it's happening in Richmond, Wayne County. And there's never been a more important time to be a knowledge town. In the inaugural State of Higher Education address last month by Indiana Commissioner for Higher Education, Teresa Lubbers, she said it's not an overstatement to say that Indiana's future, the kind of state we will be, has more to do with increasing education attainment than anything else. As a country, we used to lead the world in education attainment. But over the last 40 years, our attainment rates have been stagnant. While for the rest of the world, it has steadily and in some cases rapidly increased. We keep losing ground. And now we've fallen to 16th in the world in the percentage of 25 to 34 year olds with a college degree. And while educational attainment has remained flat over the last four decades, the world around us has changed. It's been marked by dramatic economic and social change. By 2018, an estimated 55% of all jobs in the state of Indiana will require an education beyond high school. 40 years ago, only 25% of Hoosier jobs required post-secondary education. You and I know that many of those jobs that didn't require additional education, they're gone. They're gone and they're not coming back. We now live in a globally competitive knowledge economy that requires us to educate many more people beyond high school. The Lumina Foundation, based in Indianapolis, the largest foundation focused exclusively on student success, has established goal 2025, that by the year 2025, 60% of all working age adults will have a college degree, and that could be a two-year degree or a four-year degree. Today, 38% of Americans have a college degree. So how does Indiana stack up? Well, not so good. Right now we have 33% of working age adults with a college degree. Sadly, that puts Indiana 40th among all states. The projection for the year 2025 is that we will have 41% of adults with a bachelor's degree. And once again, the goal is to reach 60%. So that leaves us with a gap of 19% to reach the big goal. 19% is an additional 632,000 degrees that we have to generate. 632,000 degrees, additional degrees, just to meet the state's future economic needs. So to achieve this goal, higher education has to change. The one-size-fits-all system, it won't work. We need more pathways to a college degree. We have to educate more people, but we can't do it. Uh, we, we have to do more, but without compromising costs, uh, without increasing costs, without compromising quality. Costs. Let's talk about costs for a little bit. We all know that college education, the costs have outpaced average inflation. I have four kiddos. And uh, it's staggering to think of what it's going to cost to put them through college. Actually, pretty depressing to think about that. So um, my wife, actually, she's a Notre Dame alumna. And my son, 
there, Will, he is determined to go to Notre Dame. He loves Notre Dame, and that's where he wants to go. By the year 2020, the cost uh, when he's there for his four years will be over a quarter million dollars. Quarter million dollars. So I've, I mean, I hate saying it, but I've said, dude, not happening. <laughs> not happening. You can go to IU South Bend and look north on a clear day, <laughs> and you can see the dome off in the distance. But that's the reality. If we're going to educate an additional 632,000 Hoosiers, it's not happening at campuses like this. It's just not. That's the reality. Have you ever been to a major college campus, a big college campus, and noticed any time you're there, it always seems like there's a construction project going on. There's always something being built. So will a new building lead to more college-educated citizens? Most major universities can't get much bigger in terms of enrollment. They can't get much bigger. The investments that they're making aren't increasing the size of the pie. They're redistributing an existing pie. They're not trying to attract more students. What they're doing is trying to attract better students, thus increasing their selectivity and enhancing their reputation, just redistributing an existing pie, but not, not educating more people. In Richmond, Wayne County, we are increasing the size of the pie. We have created an affordable and accessible higher education system that is efficient, productive, and of high quality. Here we have an institution that is the lowest net cost of any four-year campus in the state. We have a community college that, by definition, is affordable and open access. We have all degree options from certificates to associate degrees to bachelor's and master's degrees. We have commuter campuses, and we have a residential campus. We have on-campus options, and we have online options. And online is an important piece of the puzzle looking ahead. In our state, we have 747,000 working age adults with some college, but with no degree. That's 22% of all working age adults. So if you're working and you have a family and you want a better life, it's really hard to go to a campus. Online education removes that barrier. The Lumina Foundation commissioned a study of what is happening here in Richmond, Wayne County, and called our collaborative approach to higher education a model for campuses around the country. Another advantage that we have as a knowledge town with the diversity of our institutions is, is the way that they are meaningfully engaged with one another and with the community. In a traditional college town, there's often a clear divide. If you're not affiliated with the university, what are you? I went to Wabash, and if, if you lived in Crawfordsville and you didn't have anything to do with Wabash, well, you were a townie, that's right. Those townies. And we don't have that, right? We don't have that here. Our institutions work together with the community in civic engagement, research, creative activity, internships, and economic development. There's one final reason why I think we're a college town. Saying, I'm sorry, a knowledge town. Saying that we're a college town instead of a knowledge town highlights only one of our many community assets. We have so many amenities that are attractive to knowledge workers. The arts, such as our symphony, uh, Cope Center, Hayes Arboretum, uh, Cardinal Green Greenway, uh, and other environmental and recreation attractions. And the list, you all know, the list can go on and on. Knowledge exists throughout the community. It doesn't just reside in our companies, in our uh, colleges. It also resides in our companies. Companies like Perpetual Recycling, that's on the cutting edge of their industry through uh, innovative approaches to recycling by truly recycling plastic instead of downcycling. That's specialized knowledge that exists right here. So these things are all important pieces of the picture. I lived in Columbus, Indiana for five years, and Columbus is known for two things. It's world-class architecture and Cummins, a Fortune 500 company. Again, we're different, though. We're different. We don't have an iconic company. We don't have a golden dome. There's no one thing. But I think what's distinctive for us is this compelling picture of when you put our progressive uh, higher education system together with all these other community assets. So what makes us distinctive is that mosaic when you put it all together. And what is the common denominator? It's talent. It's knowledge. 
So let me leave you with one last thought. If we are indeed a knowledge town, we have to start thinking and acting like a knowledge town. And that begins by saying it. It's like if you, uh, the saying, if you build it, they will come. If you say it, people will do it. People will be it. Our community puts out a variety of messages. And this is not a criticism at all. Uh, we have outstanding leadership organizations in our community. And many other places have major community organizations that, that are individually branded. But what if? What if we tapped into the power of a strong, singular message? What if we all used that same message? What would that convey? I think it would convey, beyond the message itself, that how we work together, how we interact with each other. It would show our connections to one another. I think by saying we are a knowledge town, we are in fact showing that we are a knowledge town. I always see this billboard on I-70 uh, for as long as I can remember uh, going 70, uh, 70 west. And I think it's great. I mean, it's great. It, it once again reinforces our community's interest and value in education. But what if we said something a little bit different? What if we told everyone, including ourselves, that Richmond, Wayne County is a knowledge town? We are a knowledge town. So let's build on that strength together. Thank you.